Hello everybody, I'm Sean O'Mahuna and this is my entry to the Great Guitar Build-Off Unofficial Competition 2020. <laughs> Unfortunately, I started this build about a week before I decided to film it and enter it into the Great Guitar Build-Off. So, because of that, we've missed a lot of the wood prep and laminations and glue-ups. This is a big old chunk of Greenheart, which is a wood similar to teak, and it has an Irish horse chestnut top. I was experimenting with making my own wood binding for this. So this is Irish oak. And at the moment it has maple veneer laminated to the back of it. I found using a mold was probably gonna be the best option to pre-bend the binding before gluing it onto the body. I had to replace the vapor veneer before gluing in, but it all worked out fine. This was a pretty cool build. I really enjoyed it. It came out a bit heavier than I wanted at the end at about 5.2 kilos ish which is 11-12 pounds. Quite a meaty beast but I like it. I like a good heavy guitar. The neck on this is a three-piece laminate of Irish walnut and what I believe to be latty wood, which is one I hadn't heard of, but it's very straight, very stiff, and very stable. It's reclaimed from part of a table that was in my grandmother's kitchen for years. I used it mainly because it was a good contrasting wood. I've been building now for about 10 years, on and off. I'm uh, pretty much completely self-taught. And I just kind of learn as I go. Whenever I come up to a new obstacle, half the fun is figuring out how to get over it. I skipped over a lot of the cavity routing on the back. It was, it was a bit boring to watch simply because it was all what I call blind routing. The template is on and I can't see it or the bit. Very similar to the way I'm doing the cavity recesses here. And for the back plates, more Irish oak. This is a cutoff. I try to reuse and salvage as much as possible. I hate wasting pieces. But they came out, I think, very nicely at the end. They've got a really cool cathedral style pattern to them. Or like a leaf, especially the smaller one is very leaf-like in my head. Watching this back, I really wish I had thought of and planned ahead for a video like this. 
my own content, because it's such a slow pace, it doesn't lend itself particularly well to being, to being reduced to a 20 minute video. The good old angle grinder carving. This is a lot of fun. Definitely, if you build yourself, give it a go. Once you get the hang of it, you can be surprisingly accurate. Of course, you have to clean everything up with scrapers and hand tools afterwards, but it's all part of the fun. onto the neck finally. I do like using templates. Even if it's a one-off, I just, I like it. There's something comforting when you use a template, I think. I suppose it's because you make it out of MDF and <laughs> if you screw it up, it's only MDF. There's a lot of loudness while building a guitar and any time I get to use hand tools nice and quiet is a good time. The poor blade on this bandsaw got thrown in the bin immediately after this and swapped to a better one to cut the headstock angle and the, the profile of the neck. There's something so satisfying about smoothing out the headstock after you've cut the, the angle into it. Not sure what it is. And you've all seen this router bit featured on Ben's channel before. Fantastic piece of kit. Of course, wings to bulk up the headstock. I love using these table saw jigs to cut fretboards. Really accurate, really quick, great. Taking the fretboard back off the jig, that's another story. Only mildly terrifying. Bit of masking tape to protect the truss rod. Is it necessary? I have no idea, but I like to do it. Helps keep glue out of the truss rod cavity. And you can just see the little indexing pins I have on the fretboard, through the fretboard in fact, into corresponding holes on the neck. Helps keep everything in line. I'm trying not to teach during this, but it seems to be my default when doing these videos. This is re-sawing a piece of the offcut from the horse chestnut top to go onto the headstock. I think it really brings a sense of cohesion into the build, which I just love. And you can see here, there's cracks going through it, just make it. And then there's a couple of knots, a cluster of knots, if you will. I just love that. Nature has a lot of beauty in it. You just have to open your eyes and see it. 
This was really fun to do as well. Just putting in the angle at the very end of the headstock plate. Very, very satisfying to get it. And then cutting the recess for my truss rod cover. Again, I used indexing pins for the headstock plate. You can just about see them, but not when it's assembled. This is a bit I'm really, really happy with on this build. I resawed some walnut bark. You can see this really cool scale pattern it had. And that's what I used for my truss rod cover. I just thought it was so cool. I couldn't, couldn't throw it away. I don't think I've ever seen bark being used in an electric guitar before, or acoustic guitar. And then I find it didn't stand out enough against the headstock plate. So, of course, I had to bind it. I just used a bit of maple veneer for that. Nothing too fancy. I think it came out pretty nicely, if I do say so myself. For the inlays, I decided to go for something simple brass ringed horse chestnut. The horse chestnut is off cuts from the head plate. Again, keeping the theme I like to have, I love the way the top wood is at all points on the guitar. For me, it gives a good sense of homogeneity. I think that's the word. I think they came out well, nice and subtle. I also went for a compound radius on this one, 16 inch to 9.5 inch. It's one I find very comfortable myself. Takes a little while to get it perfectly right, but it's worth it in the end. And a little bit of boiled linseed oil to finish it off. I think it really brings out the grain in the wood, brings out the color. And to fretting, I just used standard, st standard nickel silver frets for this one. You'll notice I'm also putting in frets before carving the back of the neck, which is the way I prefer to do it. You can do carving first, it's up to yourself. This is just the way I find works best for me. And this is frets in with the ends beveled, you can see. Side darts again, very, very, very simple. And they're just two millimeter brass rod, which is actually a brazing rod from a welder friend of mine. They came out very nice, if a bit tough to see. This is my neck carving jig, which I really, really like. It gives me total access to every part of the neck as I carve. And I carve all of my necks by feel with hand toes. I'll just put aside most of a day and go nuts. For this carve, I ended up with a, a shallowish C at the first couple of frets that tapers to a hard V by the end of the neck. 
I love this car. It's probably also asymmetrical. Next, the glue in. I didn't realize how big this neck pocket was. It took quite a bit of glue just to cover all the faces on it. But one clamp is all you need. Like that kitchen roll brand, that's it. One sheet is plenty, one clamp is plenty. And to more carving. Carving at the back is something I love to do. It gives me, it makes, I think, a much more comfortable instrument. Fits your body a lot better. It also looks pretty cool. Again, as with the top, have to finish it off with hand tools. And finally, sandpaper. But I think the result speaks for itself. For me, every part of the guitar has to be touched with hand tools at some point. Hands have to be laid on it, and that is, I think, the key to a good guitar. And that's how the recesses come out for the controls. For the pickup rings, you can see here I use the CNC, and this is more of the oak that matches the binding and the back plates. CNC is the, it's not the quickest way, but it is the most accurate way to get matching pieces, which uh, for me is important. But it is not a case of push a button and out pops a part. There's a lot of work that still goes into this but definitely worth it in the end. Fretwork, the bane of any build. I do not like it, but it is probably the most important part of the build. Your frets have to be spot on. There's no point you can carve the entire thing beautifully, but if it doesn't play properly because your frets are high and low, there's no point. You have to have good frets. And if you have good frets, you may as well polish them nicely. This brings it up to a mirror finish. And then you have to do it 21 more times. Couple of last holes to drill. Not too many, but it's at this stage, finishes on. It's getting real close. And soldering. I do enjoy soldering. It's relaxing to me. It doesn't completely make sense, but I can get by. For a lot of the pre-drilling, I actually really like to use old hand drills. First of all, it's much more difficult 
to drill way too far with an old drill, but there's something nice about the old and the new coming together like this. And finally, strings. <laughs>